Hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I so appreciate you guys coming and taking a look at my projects. I'm so happy to have you here. Please leave me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. It appreci I appreciate it so much and it helps me grow my channel. I am doing uh, a special request. I had someone let me know that they wanted me to do this page over and uh, talk about the double ruffle here that we have, this lacy double ruffle uh, that has this gorgeous little uh, edge here. Uh, so I am going to do this over. So if you like this page, uh, you're gonna be interested in seeing this again. And I changed it up a little bit. So let me show you this page that we're gonna be using. It is the China Cabinet paper collection. It has a double ruffle. You can see that right here. And then the little flowers going down. It has a little date tag here. And then we have China cabinet in pink that is being held down and put together with magnets. You see that? There's magnets on the back. So with this, we have three photo mats that come together and it will have a trellis on the back. So on top of learning how to do a double ruffle. We're also gonna learn how to do a trellis and the double 12 inch mat frame, window frame on the outside. So I wanted to kind of let you know this is what we have going on. Right here, I used the scrapbook crop 12 inch dies. And then I have four 12 inch strips and these strips are two inches. Now you can see that this is uh, bigger or wider, so it's okay. I'm not going to need all the extra little lace. So that's why I'm uh, going to run this here and the ruffle is all I need here on the top. So this is how we're going to run it through the little machine so that we get this part here, but this part is going to be the one that we uh, cut off. Okay, so I have my base page here I have a 12 inch frame that is for one quarter inch going around. I still haven't decided what side I want to use. I have all of these little strips that were from a different project that are just about the right size. I kind of trimmed them a little bit. And then I have the two inch strips that are for the double ruffle. And I have a set in the pink and I have a set in the green. 12 inch frame is going to sit right on top and it's gonna sit right on top. So you already have one inch, uh, half an inch here that is not gonna be seen. So then we put this next strip about right there. Okay. So we're putting a little pencil mark and that's gonna be the first strip for the double ruffle. And now we're putting the next ruffle in and the next ruffle we're going to have just slightly overlapping it so that the little uh, fingers you can still see on this part. And now we're gonna put a little mark on it. There we go. So now we have our lines written down. And what we're going to do on this side is we're going to do the double-sided extra strong tape. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing to these four. Okay, so I have two of the two inch 12 long strips okay I've uh, primed them before I put them through and priming is when you uh, take your little ribbons and you kind of uh, maneuver them soften them up because this is heavy what I'm using right now is heavy uh, cardstock the double-sided cardstock which means that the heavy cardstock is a little bit stiffer than your text weight I prefer using text weight for this technique but this is also just as good. We have here our ruffle and we're going to add one, okay? And with this technique I use is I uh, do two pencils 
and uh, now remember that you need to do one in half an inch here flat because that's where the frame is going to be at and we're going to use the pencil mark here as a guide and put this down right on the edge so this little edge here is going to help us stay nice and straight with our ruffle okay we remove a little tiny bit okay we're putting this down okay now we put pencil it's going to be our guide mark oh Okay, so we do this, and then with your next pencil, you're going to bring that pencil mark down. Okay, and then with the next pencil, you pull this pencil out. And you come back around and hold that space. And then you bring down that little mark. Okay. Okay. This is the pencil that presses down. So that's our pencil that presses down. This is the pencil that holds our space. So that when you come around with the ruffle, you're pressing down right there. And then you press down, pull that one out, and come back around. Okay? So... And then we come back. Okay. And then we're pulling this one out and coming back, holding the space. Okay, this one's coming out and being the pressing down. And then this one is our space. So we're pulling out and you're coming back down. And this happens over and over until we get to the end. Pressing down. Okay. You see how that's working okay so you end you're ending up with these little ruffles right there and there's the little ruffles all right coming around and making this little part Okay, so I finished to the end, and here is where I am with my ruffles. You can see how it starts. Okay, 
you see a spot, a ruffle that goes up where the ruffle goes up and then where it goes down, okay, right there. And then on the ends, I have them really nice and flat because that's where the frame is going to go at. And then I clip that little piece to keep it nice and straight. Okay, so now the next part with this ruffle is I pinch it and fold down. Okay, pinch and fold down. Okay, now here we have, and we pinched it and folded it down, okay? So now that is to go in here with our double, okay? So now this is going to be just barely into that pencil line. And if we stay in that pencil line, the little edge or the little, uh, Floor de lis little finial looking thing is going to be on top of this one. That gives us the best option for this gorgeous lace where we can really see it. So since this one started, this ruffle, I want it to start a little bit offset into the it. So I don't want it to be starting on the same edge. I want it to start on the next edge. So I'm going to cut it. And basically what I'm doing is cutting off one edge, one little finial off of this little piece so that we can start a little bit offset from where we started for the second, the first ruffle. So now we are putting this one down and then we wrap around and we are putting this one. We get our next pencil and we're gonna press down because we want that same amount of space, okay? So now that we have that one down as a space holder, we pull on this one and then this one is going to be the next space holder and it makes the ruffle. Okay, so here's this one and I'm gonna put it in as my ruffle space holder and I'm gonna wrap this around and bring it up and then we bring it down Okay, and then we bring this over to press down. Pull this one out. And 
then you're using this as your ruffle space and you're bringing this one down and you bring this pencil in to press and hold it while you remove the other one. And then you make your little space holder and then you bring your little ribbon, your ribbon, your paper right over it to catch that space. pull this out press down okay Okay, so now we have this ruffle. See that? And now what I do on this side is I snip this piece off. Now that they're all nice and up and roughly, what I do is I pinch it and fold it down. Pinch it and fold it down. Very easy. Pinch it and hold it down. Pinch it and fold it down. Okay, so look at that. Now we have the ruffles, the double ruffles. There we go. So next we're going to add all of the trellis to this, okay? So I have the two inch ruffles in. You see that we use the pencil mark here to put this down. And now we have this part, which was my leftovers from another project. I think it was two projects ago. I love this page because it has these little uh, china cabinet plates on it. And that is going to help us guide where we place our, uh, our trellis. Do you see that? So I'm gonna kind of use the plates as my ruler, where before I don't want the most strong glue for this. So I'm going to use my uh, ATG gun and we're gonna go right on the edge of the inside of this, okay? And this is gonna be where we are attaching our trellis to. So here we have our first trellis and I'm gonna to get to this point and I'm going to attach my little trellis. Now, mind you, I did run this through uh, an embossing folder uh, the slimline embossing folder so that I could have a little bit of texture just because, you know, we we, we have the folders. Why not use them in different uh, ways? So I put this right in between, right there. And then you bring this and you want a slight taut, but not too taut, okay? And then on this side, we're going to cut this little piece off because we might need that. Can you see that? We might need that for a different piece. There we go. Now we're gonna do the next piece. Same area. So now we grab another one. Uh, 
a half inch. They are a little tiny bit smaller than a half inch. Uh, they're not all exactly the same size because I uh, these are scraps. And believe me, nobody's going to notice if they're not the exact same size. They're only gonna see your lovely loved ones and pictures on this, so don't worry about them not being the perfect size. Now remember, I had seven strips at, we're saying a half inch, and we're going to need more of them. Now I'm gonna add the next direction because I want to, uh, I, I don't have this strip anymore. This is the bottom of my barrel of, of my china cabinet. I bought two kits, but I'm saving one kit as a gift uh, giveaway. So I don't want to open up that. That's a, that's a giveaway product. So we have seven going in this direction. So this would be number seven. So I need at least six going in the other direction and we are going to one here. So ha we need six of them and we are doing half inch. That's the size that was, that we used before. So there we go. One, Okay, so those are our six. These are our six little trellises, and you can see that they are organically cut. Some are a little bit uh, wider than others, and that is okay with me uh, because we're going to emboss them. So I take these here, and I'm sure that we have an embossing folder that goes with this. That's the 12 inch ones. But if you don't have that, you can do this trick right here, and you put them in here and fold them up and you run it through your machine wow. like this. We have these here and you see we only have half of them done and you kind of just flip them over because they've been pressed together so you don't have to separate them all up and I kind of put them again just organically down. You don't want to make them super weak so I don't like to press them twice on the same mark and then you kind of bring them around and I'm even using my short little minis here and it doesn't matter because it's catching that area. And we're going to continue. Now mind you, this was a scrap, remember? So my scrap is not gonna be 12 inches long to catch the end and that's okay. We're gonna make this work. Or so we're adding another sandwich here of double-sided tape so that we catch right on top of the areas we need to catch. Okay, so now we're taking this little piece and okay, so it's gonna be about right there. So now what we wanna do is decide when we're weaving similar to a basket, going up and down, up and down, I'm gonna start on the very back corner. So here, I'm going to say this is gonna be over the first one, and the next one is gonna to have to be under. So I snipped it to the approximate size, and I'm going under this little spot, and then we're going over, over the next one. And I'm still using my guide as these little uh, plates because my little strip is going right in between the plates. Which is really nice because it's easy for you to know when to start and stop. You're, you have an organic uh, stop here. Okay, just like that. And then we're gonna get another little piece and keep going like another that. Another little piece and we're gonna put it down in between. So again, I am starting with the over and I'm kind of aiming into the right spot. So we're gonna put this down at over and you can see that since this one's gonna be over, this one's gonna be under and then over and then under, okay? And then I can commit to where I want to put it in the little strip here. Uh, 
I will show you, this one is also going over. So we don't need, we can't do that. We have to start, and I kind of was thinking that, that it was gonna do that. So now we have to go under this first one, under, over, Okay, so now you can see, especially with these being a little bit different color, here is what we have. This one is going under, over, under, over, under, over, and it kind of goes with the one that's going this way. This one is under, over, under, and then the next one will be over, okay? So kind of, you know, play with that, and you can do that here before you even put the tape down. So now we wanna put this exactly where we want in between the little china plates. There we go. And we're going right in between. And we put it down on this side and we cut off the little tail, just like that. And I go and put it right in between where we want the china plates that works really nice these little plates are such a good it's almost like having a graft that you can see exactly where you want them to be and here it looks like we're going to be on an over and then this next one is going to be under over now be gentle with your paper after you've embossed it it can split quite easily so when you curve into it you want to be careful with it Okay, here. So I did six of these, and this is plenty of strips for the six that we are working with. Okay, now let's test it out and see if that's working for us. That one is correct because this one is going over and under, so I think we've got it. So now I reach all the way into this little piece and then we're aiming to make sure that we've got the right amount of distance between the plates. And then we have our last little piece. We've got this one here. And now let's think about how we want this one to go. This one is going over, so that means this one has to go under. Do you see that, that little basket weave? And so we have one going under and two of these are going over. And then we get to snip this little piece off. Okay, lovely crafters, look at that. Is that extremely gorgeous or what? Now this is that busy, okay? That valance on here has much bigger holes and you can see that when you start looking at this one, uh, my diamond shapes here are, are different sizes because I didn't have a graft or a piece of, of area that I was going with and I knew I was gonna cover them up with this little these little pages, so I didn't mind that at all, okay? You see how that works? Don't be crazy about trying to make your triangles, I mean, your diamonds just perfect when we're gonna cover that up anyway. So that is where we're at with that one. And this one, since we had an, a graft paper, a graph paper, these little plates that we were exposing, it really is looking extraordinary. It looks just perfect. Okay, so here is that piece. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with our little uh, scissors and I like to go behind it and just do a little snip to get those little spots off. Okay, so now we have this double frame here and it needs to go right on top of this section. Okay, do you see how that's starting to come out? It's just so cute. And we started the ruffles, we gave the ruffles some space here so that we knew we were gonna have this frame on it so we didn't want to ruin that part of it. So I feel like I wanna use something pretty strong here. So I'm going to add uh, the double-sided score tape that's really strong because I don't want this to get ruined and come apart. I'm just gently kind of moving and maneuvering my little ruffles. We have this. This is our china cabinet. 
with the double frame with a double ruffle here. Here is our double ruffle. So here we go. So now what the next part is, is to add our uh, mats. And I used on the original layout, I used three mats, one that's being held together by, to, uh, this one is being held together by magnets, okay? It has the magic of magnets going on in here. And then we have two frames that are kind of hanging loveliness here. And we decorated them with this gorgeous little uh, ruffle here. Uh, we might have some leftover ruffles to do that with and some flowers. And here is our, uh, so now because this one is kind of more of a blue and teal greens, so I need to find some ribbon that will be beautiful with that. With that, that would be just perfect. So that's our next step. Let's start working with the mats. Okay, crafters, we are ready to start building the frames. The frames were used by all leftover kind of gorgeousness here and here and two magnets to kind of hold everything in. Okay, this is uh, what I'm considering a memory board or a vision board. So let's find some lovely leftovers so that we can make the rosette. This is a half of a rosette here cut first with the die dies. So I have this leftover piece that I think will go good because we have greens and blues going on. And you wanna use double-sided paper because you're gonna see it from both sides. So we have this and we're gonna cut into two inches. Okay, so you can see now where the die is at and this die would be better off with two and a half inch but I don't need that little scallop, so I on purpose put that little uh, bottom of this out. But you always keep your little emojis right here. These little emojis are going over to the side for something else that's gonna be lovely. Okay, so we have these two here. Okay, this is the one that I use. It's the rosettes, uh, pleated rosettes and barter borders in small because I think I used the big last time and small seemed to be better. Uh, it would be less fat, if that makes any sense. So I like to use my hot glue gun when I make rosettes. And here is the pleats on the rosettes. And you just kind of gently work this because this is now delicate lace that we're turning into rosettes. It's hot glue to put this little uh, rosette together. And so here I have joined two, two inch by 12 rosettes and we pleated them together. And then I joined them together in the middle so that it comes together. And then I have two little uh, ro uh, rosettes, these little round ones. This is an inch and a half. And I'm kind of thinking it should be a little bit bigger, but we're gonna test that out. One spot. And I like using hot glue for this. So I do have my hot glue ready. So I put this right here. And since this is lace, I kind of just put it all over and kind of smear it around and catch all of it. And I am doing a five by seven in pink. And I'm putting that right there. And then I bring the other tail over here and I'm gonna put it in the same exact spot so that we have this spot that we have to cover up uh, the same like I did on this gold one. You see how I covered it up later with a little bit of some leftover piece? So we put that right here. And we bring this around. Okay, and that is where I am measuring it. And you see how this little this little thing here is going to be, I think, too small to hold this in because it's it barely holds that piece there. So I'm going to have to find a, a bigger a bigger piece for that. And then we're gonna bring this all in and we're gonna put hot glue on it when we start putting it together. I'm just showing you our, how we're doing this. You start pleating them all in and you hold while the rosette, the little button here, holds everything in. So I need a bigger rosette. Okay, I changed my mind. I was using two two inch strips and I've decided I only need one strip. It was just looking kind of sloppy. That that two inch strip was just looking too sloppy for me. It was too full. So I went with one strip and 
and here is where we're at. I think that looks better for me. So we're going to put a big blob of hot glue on this. And now that the preliminary type of glue is on here, I can adjust it and make it move the way I want it to move. Okay, you see how that little rosette starts to form itself? And then this little piece is going to go right on top. Okay, sweet people. So we have this one right on top. And then I flipped it over and I added the, I tore apart this little um, die because you can get them, you can do them double. So I know that I'm going to add flowers to this on top or a pretty something right here. So we can always put uh, the yucky part and put something on top of this yucky part. So we're going to put this one down and I'm going to put extra glue on it. And then we put this part down. I think it needs glue also on the handles. Okay, you see how lovely that is? So now we're going to add some strips and decorate these pieces that we don't want to see. So I use one of these, uh, the Container Store accordions. And as I'm working and have leftover pieces, I uh, put them in here. So I'm looking through here to see what... I have that could hide those little pieces. You see that? That would be darling. I think that's what I'd like to do. Just put a tiny little strip here of glue on this piece so that later, if need be, you can sneak a picture in it. Now we have this little piece here done. And the way we attach this to the memory board is with magnets and we'll do that at the end. I hope you like the way it's coming out. Let's start doing the other tags. The ones that I did before, these are tied with a ribbon to the trellis and I did the little hole punch just so that they'd be, you know, kind of cute also, but it, it, it helps keep the ribbon nice and safe in there. And then we added this little extra trim. So let's add some trim to what we have already. And I love the little gold accent, so let's do something with gold also on there. You'll see it and put that down just like that. And you end up with it doubled. And then we're gonna add a little glue and go right around the corner of it. That way you can add things to it. You see that? Very good. Okay, so here's this part. We have our little tag in there ready to receive a cute little picture or some ephemera or love note. Like I always say, something, something will come of it. And then we're going to add the top portions of it. And I am using this one inch little circle and hole punch. And then we're gonna tie with the ribbon. There we go. And then you tie it together and you make a cute little bow. I think I prefer just a little knot. Okay, lovely people, here we have our little tags attached. And now what we need to do is add our magnets. So these two are going to be attached here. And then we're gonna have this one right on top kind of like all the pretty plates so let's look and see where we're going to put our magnet i think adding these little photo corners uh to my pages i just love doing that i, I love the the frilliness of all the anna griffin patterns but this just uh, hits my heart on the areas of, of it being concise and uh, geometric and very organized and straight lines. I, I love how that looks. Plus it reminds us that a photo is supposed to be in here. It's, it's a scrapbook for our memories, uh, our uh, things that we were wishing upon that time frame. So these little photo corners to me also remind me that it is for a picture. Decide where the magnets 
then I can bring it over and snap it to this side. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to one of these little areas. I think maybe this bottom corner, because then you can see the peekaboo of all the three things. And I think I wanna do this little spot corner here. Add a little glue to this. And I put this little part right here on this corner because then I can put a corner uh, element on it or some kind of little something to uh, hide it. Okay, so now we kind of just maneuver these around and see how you want them to sit. And then once that is set, then you can, uh, this is not gonna be a good spot because see here's where we're gonna have all our beautiful flowers. So we need to kind of move this over a little bit. Remove these here and take it off that edge right here. So maybe a little more standing up would be better. Just like that. That's better. And then we can flip this over and I add a tiny dab of glue underneath that little spot, okay? I just lift this up and put a tiny glue dot in there and bring it back down. Lift this up and put a tiny glue dot and put it down. Okay, you see how that page is working? Now this goes to the other one and on this one I just have two. So now we're on the part, you see this one was the magnet and these are holding on to each other. And this is just the one that snaps in place whenever it finds the magnets for the back. And now we're gonna do these cute little flowers. So let's work on those little florals. And since we have more than just florals here, this is the china cabinet. We wanna kinda of start doing it by adding some china cabinet elements. And I think uh, that would be really special and when I was working on the punches I thought these little round pieces would be so cute so we pull those out and then we can come right back into these little areas you see how those little florals are so I want you to look at your your paper when you're looking at this as something that you can uh, design look at it more than just this gorgeous art that's just a 12 by 12 piece of paper, but also look at it as something different that we can do. So now we have six of those cute little punches. I had some of these round ones, and we have of course the gold, but the gold would be too much. We don't wanna use the gold. Uh, we have these little, these little emojis from a little leftover project, and I'm thinking that would be really, really cool to add some going in both directions, maybe one going that way and one going this way. So you're gonna see me now just kinda do a bunch of little different um, areas here. So now we've added the little emojis. And now I am going to add a little bit of leaves here and there in between. And the way I usually do that is I take apart all my little leaves and add them in uh, different pieces. Some little pictures, some little flowers going down the row, and I uh, put some little uh, fake little china cabinet plates up and down. And I have one little big one right here that I wanted to put the, one of these big pots, kind of just sneak it in so that we know it's china cabinet.
Okay, lovely crafters, here we have our all the embellishments done on this page. So as of right now, I really am an embellished girl. I love everything, just keep adding more and more. I can add some pearls, some bling, some uh, stickles, some Nouveau drops. I will do more and more and more and more. So that's why I have to kind of stop myself and say, okay, we're finished. So here is our magnet. I added little flowers to the side. I really am having a hard time not adding flowers to the very top because uh, these little flowers are like a little half circle that kind of would be perfect right there, but I'm stopping. And then the back side is just as pretty with a pretty in pink here and the little green accent and the little drop there. So here we have this one. And this is the one that has three magnets, one on each corner and then one underneath here. I just felt it was a little bit heavier, so I wanted to add uh, more magnets. And then we have two mats. Two mats are right here, tied with the gorgeous green bows that I undid. These were the bows that come with the Anna Griffin uh, kits. And I added, I took off, I took them apart. I took the little bows apart. And we went through, the, you kind of go through the little flat iron and then you're ready to go. So now we here we have our gorgeous, wouldn't that be just perfect to put a gorgeous mat right here of a picture or, so we're having this, close this in. And then we're gonna do this one in here. And then this kind of just snaps in there magically because there is magnets and I like to kind of move these around so that there's a space there for it. And we have the three magnets on the back, okay? This is going to hold six pictures. And then you have more right here. So it really is a fun way to add more pictures to the area. And it's the China Cabinet Collection with the double ruffle. I felt like I didn't give you enough instruction on how to do the double frame underneath. So the frame on top here, this is a half inch. This frame right here is a half inch. And then the blue frame that is right here is a three quarter frame. So in order to do that, this is super easy. It's a 12 inch paper. But what if we have another one that we want to do and we flip this over and look at this lovely blue here uh, that's on the back side. So I want to do a frame for this so I can show you how we do this uh, on this side. And this, of course, is a 12 inch uh, paper. Right here, I have this beautiful paper uh, frame that is left over from my scraps that is from Create Crop at Home. And uh, it was from the Happy Collection. I wanna say this is from the Happy Collection. So I would love to use this as a frame. This, let's measure this. This frame is 11 inches, okay? So this is an 11 inch frame and we want to make an inside, a quarter inch frame on the inside. So if we wanna do that, you want at least a half an inch on each side so that you can have tape or glue hold on to, okay? So we want a 10 inch, we want a 10 inch block, and then we're gonna go in three quarters, okay? So I like this blue paper right here. I think it would be good for both sides. And we're gonna to go to a 10 inch block and I am just about, this little scrap that I have is almost perfect. So we do this and we're gonna go into 10. Okay, so here we have the 10 inch block. Alrighty. And so if this frame were to sit inside, okay, we want to go in three quarters of an inch, okay? three quarters of an inch for, you have to know, get to learn your paper trimmer. That for me would be right here at three quarters of an inch. Okay, and once you go in, you have here on mines, this is uh, the half inch mark, and then the three quarter mark is what where I have marked it in black. So I go in, you pierce your paper, you go down, and you're gonna go down till you have here at 10, and mice would be right under the nine, which is a quarter, okay? I lift this up, and I like to turn it, put it on the top, three quarters, 
come down. Pierce the paper going right back up and I can go and see with the little magnifying glass where I need to go a little bit more or not. And then I turn it again. Pierce and stop. Okay, you see that? There we have, this is still another scrap. And now we have this part here. And we get to get a beautiful three quarter little edge there. The coral part is just so pretty. I might have to keep that wet glue for this. And then we take the blue. There's a tiny bit of, of texture on this paper. I think it's some of that lovely basil paper. This side is flat. And so now I'm going to go right into it and just barely let it drop. I'll flip it over so I can make sure that I am putting in the right amount. Now we have a three quarter window for that. Is that not so fabulous? And then this can sit right on top of this. But because this is sloppy looking for me, I don't like that. Do you see this little edge here? I like this one right here. I didn't like any of those shades of green, I'm sorry. Sometimes I get picky about my solids. I'd rather them be what I call small print, mute prints, than they be, I don't know, not the right color for me. So we're doing again a three quarter, as long as I kind of make sure that I keep uh, the cutting correctly, we can just do this over and over all day long. This is one of my absolute favorite ways to mix papers. Can add this one. We can even make it with the little dishes if we wanted to because this is cute with dishes. Nope, I don't like it. Let's flip it over. I like the solid muted. And we're going to add glue. And we bring this down. And then this is what I'm using to cover all the little indiscrepancies and keeping my seams nice and pretty. Okay, now don't worry about the magnets. You can kind of barely see the magnets there. Don't worry about those. Those magnets are going to go away when we start putting pictures on them or other pretty things on them. Now we're going to add what we have here now is three frames. And this again is the back. It's a free page. It's a free layout. You were already using everything else with it. And here again, wet glue because I can kind of move it a little bit. And one of these has a little magnet on it. So I'm taking the little protective piece off. There we go. Just beautiful. When you slide it into your page protector, you can flip it right over and then this could be another area where you can add gorgeousness to it. All you have to do is match your pictures and call this your easy page. Okay, here I have my page protector. I'm going to slide this in. You have to be gentle when you slide it in just to make sure that everything is in here correctly, okay? And now what we want is we want access to this section, not necessarily this section, okay? So that we can flip things over. So what I would recommend is you need a, uh, well, I like the exacto, but I'm sure that you could use your scissors if you wanted to. We're gonna hold this part real nice and tight and we're going to pierce the paper. And we're gonna go straight down. Now I am not touching the actual paper 
uh, the the what do we the layout itself. I'm just pulling on the actual. Um, I'm not touching that part with a knife. I just want it to pierce enough, and then what I feel like it's going to be easier because this is all this gorgeousness, and I don't want to cut that part. I'm right there, and I want to cut it right there. So now I'm going to do the same thing to this side. This side might be a little bit easier because it doesn't have the um, pretty flowers and everything. I felt like when I was going in with the X-Acto knife, I was getting stuck on all the flowers. You want to pierce just barely enough to cut through your plastic, but not scratch your paper. So we're going to do the exact same thing over here. We pierce in and we go down. So I'm just barely going in and then I'm flipping this over, finding where this little opening is and I can run my scissors right down the edge, straight down, okay? So I think I'd like this flap to open in this direction. So what I have here is a pair of scissors and I'm pushing my scissors into this little area and then I'm cutting straight across to meet the other opening, okay? So now I have this part open and I'm able to take this part out and these little loveliness. And when I bring this down, I want to take a little piece of this off because I don't want it to be engaging the ribbon. So I'm taking off about an inch and a half and I'm just eyeballing it. Okay, throw that plastic away. So now my plastic ends here right under where these ribbons engage. So when I have a picture or a mat that goes here or a wish list of things to do that I want for the new year, I will put that there and this plastic still holds that piece down these two can still move and in the mechanism can still move around same thing over here this mechanism can move around and i like to kind of poke them out so you can kind of see a little bit of that and then the magnet one goes right on top and it kind of just snaps in place and the magnet one keeps that little flap in the right spot that piece is and then if you flip it over you have a perfect spot for beautifulness and I have just a couple of beautiful little mats that maybe would be cute in that little space for future purpose. Maybe these cute little um, plates might work in there. I know, I've talked to you guys about how I have to sometimes stop myself because I keep embellishing or keep going and going and going. Okay, so now we have here, and these can kind of go right into this little area. And you can slide this little picture wherever you want. Other uh, plates, platters, so it has that little sticky stuff on it. But if we hide the sticky stuff and just let this area show, that's all we need to keep it there. So we're just building on it, okay? And that is my intention for this page, just like that. So let's pull this out and I'm going to put this right in here. I am not going to glue it because I'm going to use this as a giveaway. We are almost at the 500 mark and I want to give this away to one of our 500 mark uh, winners. And all you have to do is subscribe, comment, and then I'm gonna pull a name. Once we get to the 500 mark, I'm gonna pull a name and we have uh, this as a prize. So I'm not gonna glue it down, but this is what it's supposed to look like. And then this is the other side. Is that not so fabulous? 
So here we are, we have finished up another page layout. Is that not just so much fun? Hey, thank you so much for sticking in here with me. I am so happy that you come to see me every week and I really appreciate your help growing my channel. Thank you so much for all of the thumbs ups and thank you so much for commenting. I so appreciate and love talking to you all. Please continue and uh, share with your friends so that we can grow and be an awesome, fun-loving group of uh, women and men that just want to uh, appreciate each other and uh, support each other in kind ways. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.